has been working on my uh, dropping my debut track on all platforms. Mm-hmm. The uh, back end, the one I sent you. So I've just been work. I did the video, half the video for it, on the day of the release party. And I'm planning on dropping it on Halloween. So that's pretty much all I've been working towards so far. The it's called back end. Right? Yeah, back end. Yeah. Okay. So you have been pushing that. I've seen yeah. some posts on Instagram. You've done some little video teasers and yeah. things like that. Yeah. So um the video the video was shot at a like at a live show then or it was at um the video release party mm. at a Hello Goodbye. Okay. It's like uh the left side's like resident hosting spot we got right, right now. Right. And um, yeah, I was just like, might as well just go big and shoot yeah. a video, do the release yeah. party same night. Yeah, did a couple shots inside. Uh, did a couple performance shots inside. Did a bunch of shots outside with the homies. Dope. And yeah, it's just I, that's just my main focus so far right now. Just trying to push the single because you've you you have things that you've released before, but is this kind of like a rebranding now for this for is Cody like or? the official like showing of like scotty jones yeah like, this the big is, first impression yeah exactly yeah, so yeah. i was like i have to go big i have to do the video release Amazing. party this that yeah yeah and you've been working with um uh with dk yeah. he's actually the one that recommended that we do this mm-hmm. um so tell me a little bit more about that relationship and how you guys are working it was honestly like really organic like he, we were just, we would talk for years back and forth, you know, like we'd see each other, it'd be like, what's up? But it was never on like a, like, a, it was a music tip, but it was more like a, yo, what's good, bro? Like, yeah. I see you killing it. I see you doing it, that, that. Right. And then I think it was about the beginning of summer where we actually like linked up. We did a song and like that night we got the song played in Fortune. And then after that, we just looked at each other. We're like. Yeah. We got something going we, here. <laughs> we, we, we need to keep this going. We right. need to keep pushing forward with this collab right now. And yeah, we've done photo shoots, hosting gigs, uh, opening performances. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we're just right now working on just getting our fan base to grow bigger yeah. and bigger and bigger. You guys, So you guys are still working separately on solo projects, but mutually helping each other as well with yeah growing with yeah. the business see like with... i I was with um a group before them but i realized i wasn't getting used to my full potential so i kind of mm. just like i want to do this by myself yeah. but then dk and the left side came along and they kind of like brought me into the family and it, sure. it was really comfortable and it was yeah. we all clicked we all vibed and now like everybody's just trying to find their place in their role and to see where we want to go really with all this Amazing. That's that's so important to have a team like that. Yeah. Where all like minded people, people that you vibe with, not just on a professional level, but like you said, you and DK, like before all this, you know, you knew each other. There yeah. was the respect was there and yeah. now it's like it's all coming together. So that's it's all what clicking. I think made it more organic. Cause at mm-hmm. first it was like we got to like see how each other worked. Right see what made us like you know who we are and all this and then all of a sudden it was like hey i think it's time that we actually like so it was we were more homies before and then the music came which made it more easier to yeah. vibe out and connect and click and make these bangers that we're doing now <laughs> yeah that's that's amazing um are you still for the videos element is it still um is it dream it that you're that it's doing the visuals for you or uh i a lot of my videos with my old crew have been dream it yeah but um actually a family friend is uh shooting this one for me uh he goes by a uh, forbes shot by forbes okay. on uh instagram he's doesn't he does a lot of uh he does a lot of visuals out here okay yeah forbes yeah um and before before this and just let me know if you don't want to talk about this, but everything before was with uh, a whole different crew. Like yeah. you were with, it's Baby Fresh? Yeah, Baby Fresh Productions. Baby Fresh. Um, now, are you still with them or did you part on good terms with them? Or Because um, now you have a whole new team, right? Yeah, it was more of a, for me, it was more personal issues. Mm-hmm. And then the music came and the egos and I want to be the one in the spotlight and people saying it was just more it was just very toxic for me to mm. be in there and i knew i wasn't going anywhere with it so i i was finally like man i gotta 
I, like this is like music is all I have. Music is I want my life to be. So I was like, I have to do this on my own. I yeah. can't can't let you guys drag me down or not put me in a position where I'm gonna succeed and excel. So I was like, Kate, that's it. Um, I'm gonna separate myself. I'm gonna do music on my own. But you guys are still my homies. Like I, I love all you guys. Right. Like we can still make music. But to them, it was more of like I was like saying, "F you guys, I'm out. I'm better than you guys." Mm -hmm. So I realized that the egos in all of us were really big, and it just wasn't a good fit for me at all. Yeah. So you made the decision to get out. Yeah. And as a result, you've kind of landed some big new opportunities like yeah, we've just like been discussing so really was, big opportunities i've had yeah. since i've separated myself from that yeah so you know that's like that's a theme in life right like yeah. you, that that plunge or that leap like it's it's you know you, you don't know it's like the fear of the unknown it can yeah, be exactly. scary right like if oh, if i leave all this behind like what am i gonna have yeah. after this but sure enough like you know um, it takes a lot of courage to do that, and then you, the universe, kind of rewarded you. Yeah, a little exactly. Bit, right? so. The thing is, I grew up with all those guys. Like, oh, really? Uh, Baby Fresh, who was the runner of the label, was uh, I've known him. Our par our mom and moms knew each other before we were even thought of. So like, oh wow, okay. We were born. We've known each other since diapers, and yeah. So it was a big like, big shocker to everybody. Yeah, like it was like whoa, like Scotty's actually. Because everybody thought we'd be stuck to the hip for the rest of our lives, but it was <laughs> I was default, just, right? yeah, yeah. But I was yeah. like, you know what? Like, in order for me to feed mine and yeah. make sure that I'm good, yeah. I need to do this. Yeah, and it might have been scary at first, like people were bashing me, saying this and that. But at, as soon as I was gone, I was like, hey, you know what? I don't care. Yeah, like I have a daughter to feed. I I have a career I need to progress in and yeah. so i was like hey yeah this is it like it's time to make that jump into an independent solo career yeah yeah and i'm still independent solo but i'm also left side like that's that's the team yeah like, that's my team like i put left side on everything i put left side on all my cover photos on sure. everything yeah we all host the events together we all sit down brainstorm ideas so it's it was it was a good I think it was a good move on my part to finally drift away and find my yeah, own man. path. That's amazing. No, like that's that's really ins inspiring um, to hear a story like that, right? Um, and then to see you come out on top like yeah. this. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just hoping for you know big things. The the, the stuff that's not out yet that I've yeah. been privileged to be able to check out. I'm really stoked on. So yeah, um, me too. Yeah, dude. Me like too. I'm rooting for you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um. So on the left side team you have do you guys have like in-house um producers and engineers that only work with your artists or how does Actually, that work uh, dk is just starting to uh i mean he's been doing beats but now he's starting to like like oh we're, we're making all the beats like yeah our we're only doing our beats for the team because sure. nobody really wants to go out of pocket five hundred dollars a thousand dollars to find a beat and the song flop you know like yeah <laughs> so like he's like we we me and him it was just me and him in the studio when we recorded the song we have together called flip okay it was just me and him he uh got the beat from somebody he went to school with i think and yeah we just trying to trying to actually make left side like a label like mm artists want to come record with us mm -hmm. they want our beats they want this that us hosting us performing so like yeah right now it's basically just we're trying to just do all in house ourselves but back end is actually um the beats done by my brother two-tone and he, he recorded it as well but i'm trying to stay at home more mm. with the beats and whatnot like he'll obviously help me out but we're trying to just build our own brand and not so much like rely on other people to back us or like with yeah. beats and yeah. producing and all this. And if, I mean, if you can build a team where one each person has a thing they're really good at, and then you can kind of all feed each other, right? Yeah, like the, know um, your not like saying like put you in your place, but like know your role, you know. And yeah. like <laughs> if this is what you're good, if you're good at marketing, yeah, stick to marketing. Do Don't that. try to yeah. rap. Yeah. Don't try to produce. Yeah. You know, <laughs> if you're a producer, stick to producing, rapping, rapping. You know, like Every everybody time. just needs to just know their role yeah stay, stay in their lane and yeah. you'll be that much better yeah you know, exactly uh, um but you'll put up work that you're proud of instead mm -hmm. of um yeah trying to wear too many hats that's something i've been guilty of in the past is just trying to you know 
do everything myself. Yeah. My own album cover, my own this, yeah. that, the other. Um, but like, I have no patience for that, to be honest. Like, not <laughs> at all. Trying to learn like some photo editing thing. Yeah. Like, on, for on, me, on it's a just like, I'm just like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm an artist. Like, yeah. just give me a microphone, give me a stage, give me a booth. I'm, I'm good. You guys deal with everything else. Yeah. And, and, you know, if you're serious about it, you'll save the money and invest in the career to pay the right person for the right thing. Exactly. And that's what people, you know, I, I'm, I'm proud to see a lot of the guys I've been working with over the years come to that realization going from getting the beat off YouTube, doing the MP3 convert where now they're yep. like hitting up the producer, <laughs> buying songs the stems, done, songs already done. Um, sitting down with me, doing a proper mix, and maybe we add a little bit of extra instrumentation afterwards, and then seeing the look on their face, being like, "Oh, I'm never getting an MP3 again. Like exactly. we're only getting the stems from yeah, now on." Like, that's that was the problem <laughs> with us back in the day. Like we would find a beat on YouTube, MP3 convert it, record it, <laughs> go to the producer's page, twelve hundred for the beat. Oh, scrap the song. <laughs> we don't even want. I don't even want the beat no more. Like. It doesn't have to be that expensive though. Like yeah, that that's you know maybe for an exclusive. Yeah, like yeah, you'd be paying that's, that's the thing nowadays is nobody wants to have to pay out some producer yeah. if their song blows. You know, yeah. like that's why I'm always like I need exclusives. If you don't, if I'm not buying an exclusive, mm. then really it's like I don't want to pay twenty five dollars for this beat, but I only yeah. make so much off of sure. it if it does get to that potential. Mm -hmm. And so like the exclusive, I'm always like if I go to YouTube see the exclusive and it's under 500 hey why not okay so as opposed to um not even doing a lease but there's you know there, they have options where you can get the track outs all the stems like sometimes they'll do two for one mm -hmm. 150 bucks for two beats um but they'll they'll send you a contract and in the contract it's like if you get more than a hundred thousand yeah. plays you, you owe me some money yeah yeah <laughs> but on at the same time three or four or five or however many other rappers might be using the same beat as you exactly um but that's not the worst thing in the world because then you're still getting a high quality product for, yeah you can you know getting the beats for a, a hundred bucks a beat like it actually stems, happened like, to me i grabbed shit. a beat a couple months later young Dolph's on it I'm like, oh man, it was mm. just very disowning. Like, oh, mm. I don't even want to <laughs> release this song yeah. no more. Yeah. Um, so, what's your um, what's your what's your routine like? Uh, getting ready for a show, like getting when you when you're doing a show uh, for the album release, for example, or for other like other sets you may have done. Um, um to I repetitively listen to the song, mm. car headphones. Yeah. If it's a couple of days before the show at work, I'll be sitting there with the phone to my ear just, and I'm very quiet yeah. before a show. Oh, really? I'm very mm. silent. I don't like to, like, I'm excited. Of course I'm excited, but I'm very, I turn into, I think it's extrovert. Introvert. 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 Yeah, that's what I turn yeah. into. Because okay. I'm very, ext I'm very, I'm very, I like people, you know, You're I'm very, most of the yeah, time. Yeah, but when yeah. it comes to like music mm. and like shows, like when I get prepared for a show, it's no alcohol. I might smoke a little, mm. but not to the point where I'm like on stage, just like yeah. boring, you know? Yeah, sure. Uh, work out, get some cardio in, because I'm, I'm, I like to jump here there run around and love that i yeah, love that like, you said the word cardio because <laughs> like it's it's that's it's so that's so important dude yeah but yeah just i just like to i visualize what i'm gonna do on stage before mm. i do it mm. i like to visualize the crowd reaction or if a certain part of the song has like a big drop i like to like amp up and like see like picture what i'm gonna do as soon as that beat drops if i'm gonna jump right. or if i'm just gonna get everybody lit it's like a i like take like take myself through a course yeah 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 so you're you're actually putting on a show yeah and you're you're thinking about every step of the way mm -hmm. all the way through and you know um considering the audience that's so yeah. huge it sounds like you've you you understand that like you said i don't want to be boring you said that a minute ago but i've had like, crowds of like a hundred but it's like young you know when you do the all ages shows sure. like everybody's just trying to like i've had to like stop my set sometimes and be like yo i'm not here for no reason like mm. 
I need everybody to get lit. Like everybody turn up, come close to the stage. Because a lot of people, crowds are scared to come like forth. There's like that gap of like yeah. in front of the stage yeah, where no one I'm wants just to like, stand, right? I'm like, come on. Like mm. y'all are here for a good time to see performances. We have so many good local artists. Like yeah. turn up, come enjoy your night. Yeah. Good Instead of just good standing there like, <laughs> yeah. like you know, just watching. It's It's kind of like... Why are you here, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I never understood that. Um, it's like people that go see a stand-up comic and like talk the whole time. Yeah, or like shout out and, like yeah. ignorant comments and just it's just it's ignorant and disrespectful. Yeah. Like that person on stage there is putting on like a craft that's an art for form. The and you need to be respectful. Like you paid to come, and, there. and you paid to come. So it's <laughs> what like are you doing. You paid to come to stand around. Yeah, or like. Sp- speak out yeah. it's not doesn't make really make sense yeah. to me yeah okay so so you'll you'll full stop the show and, oh yeah and have a little chat with them oh yeah yeah, Good yeah. For you. um as far as like rehearsing ahead of time is there a like will you ever like get an actual mic and a pa and play the beats so you can like hear a lot of guys come actually use our space here mm-hmm. for rehearsals right and they'll, they'll get the mic and uh, you know because hearing what you sound like in the mic while you're over the music mm-hmm. can be really, really important. Right? Yeah. Because rapping at home, acapella is one thing. It's completely different. But on, on stage, you know, you need to be like 300% bigger than mm-hmm. normal. Exactly. Um, is that something that you've done before? Like rehearsed with, with Recently, gear? Recently, um, actually like, uh, before I never did sound check. There was a problem with me. I never... Mm-hmm. So I don't need to sound check. Yeah. I don't need to go and practice. Like I know I'm but eventually <laughs> I'm like, you know what? Like I think it was it was one show where I was just like, yo, this sounds horrible. Like I had stopped, like I had two more songs left and I'm just like I'm like, no, I c I'm good. I did like three songs and oh, I was right in the like, middle of the set. Even. I'm like, hey, yeah, yeah I'm good. Yeah. I switch it up. But um just recently now I've been like I grab like a mic because I just have like a little mic and speaker at home, mm. a little app and whatnot. And I just plug it in and I just sit there and just play with my voice kind of to mm-hmm. see how I want pitchings to sound in the songs. If I want to go lower octane or higher and like, yeah, it's, practice makes perfect. Right. So, oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and the being good being good on the CD, being good on SoundCloud, being good in the booth is one thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, uh, nowadays more than ever, especially people want to go to shows. That's how artists are making yeah. all their money, oh, touring yeah. and shit, right? So, 52 states, $10,000 a st- <laughs> Right? <laughs> like, and put if, me on. If you're lip syncing your set or you're just like, I don't know, just it looks unrehearsed. Mm-hmm. I feel like you're gonna lose fans, right? Oh, yeah. Like if someone, if I, if I hear someone I re- really like and the CD's dope and or the music's dope, the mix sounds great, but then I go see them live and, and they're like, just amateur. Like, no, both of those have to be equal. Both of mm-hmm. those have to be on par with each other. Um, so I think that's so great that you're refining the live game so much. Yeah. Um, people need to, yeah. Because 2018, more I was doing like. <sighs> Two, three shows a month for the whole year. Local, like That's out consistent. of town. And I was just trying to, I was so focused on just doing shows, mm-hmm. I forgot about the music. <laughs> so I was barely putting anything out. Mm. This is the first, the back end is the first song I'm putting out myself on any platform. Yeah. Everything else is on SoundCloud that are just like maybe like throwaway tracks or like remixes yeah. that I did. Yeah. And so it's just, yeah, I just, I'm just trying to, be the best entertainer i can be best performer mm-hmm. artist i'm trying to learn all the back ends to everything that like the promoting part the managing part like just so i can know if i'm getting finessed or not because totally you, a lot of artists just yeah, man. they just i want to make like i before i just want to make music but now you got to learn the business aspect of it because you don't want to go into something and not have any clue what's going on yeah, so or sign some sort of deal where it looks great on paper, and but then, then it's like, oh, you know, at, by, at the end of the day, once you've paid the lawyers and the this is and that's, you and, got and like chump change in your like, pocket. 
oh, I already paid for that car and what have I got left now? Exactly, like, exactly. So that's, yeah, that's super important. And the modern artist has to be that. Yeah. You know, that's the world we live in nowadays going into 2020. Like the modern artist has to understand all of those things mm-hmm. like thoroughly, right? Um, you know, it's not, you know, in the, you know, the 80s or the 90s where like all you had to worry about was like showing up for your session on time. Mm-hmm. And you had you know, Bob and Steve and the lawyer and the manager and the A&R dudes and all these other just guys taking care of everything. taking care of business. And you have no <laughs> clue exactly what's going on. And you just have to hope that they're not digging their hands in your pockets yeah. too deep. Like the Backstreet Boys. Mm-hmm. That, that's an amazing story. If no yeah. one knows about that, how yeah. they got finessed. Like big time. They made no money at all. When they were With like the first multi- year, I think it was platinum. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, not amazing for them, but just an amazing story. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, like get that you're getting, get smart, learn the business, know, know like where your money's going, know yeah. where your time's going and all of those things. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's huge, dude. Being the, the everything man, just being like really on top of things. Um, you know, cause it's so easy to, to get taken advantage. Just, just advantage knowing of. like. You don't have to be the, your manager. You don't have to be your own lawyer and this and no. that. You know, just knowing exactly what the fine print says sure. or like everything, just yeah. having a knowledge of how everything works. Yeah. You'll be good to go. Yeah, no, you don't need to do those jobs. Mm-hmm. We already we already said that before. Let those people yeah. stay in their lane and do exactly. that. But, but at least be on top of it and understand what you're getting yourself into. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so uh, tell me about like how you first got into all of this like when did you decide that you wanted to try a, a career in music and well um get growing up my uh my dad was like he goes by the name boogie v and he was out here actually dance battling rap battling um he toured with celine dion he is in a couple of her videos rapping and dancing no shit and my grandfather actually was um a jazz player in uh, harlem and like so it's it's it was only natural for me to follow their lead okay so i've always been in a musical background it wasn't until like maybe like grade two i did my first ever performance <laughs> I, I recited a little romeo song in front of my whole school parents oh like at a big gymnasium yeah it was like a big thing. talent show yeah, you know yeah. like it was a big deal for all my family because it's the first time i was ever like i want to mm. do music nice and so I did that. I was like, yep, this is good. Kind of fell off and was more into the dancing aspect of music. Mm. So all throughout from grade seven to grade 12, I danced on the dance team. And okay. Solo dances. Like, and are we talking like hip hop dancing or yeah. like actual oh, break dancing? Throughout like, every, I've done ballet, contemporary, jazz. I was I was like the dancer like oh, I didn't care okay. like I wanted yeah. every to know everything mm-hmm. and um yeah it was it was it was mostly hip hop dance I was on yeah. like early age grade eight I think I was I was on the grade twelve team and so like it was just dance 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 that's all it was for me but everybody else rapped right and one day we were at I, oh, I forget the park but it's in like it's in Surrey somewhere in like almost in Cloverdale we were all chilling at a park. This is like my old old uh, label and whatnot. And they're like, why don't you just rap? Just freestyle. <laughs> okay, yeah. So we're like, all right, put on a freestyle. I did it, I did it. And everybody's like, yep, you're a rapper now. They're like, stop dancing, you're a rapper. I'm like, no, I'm not going to stop dancing just because I know how to rap. Yeah. So 13, recorded my first song, uh, Fire by the Hour. My older cousin and then Baby Fresh. And then one of our uh, our brother, we, he's our basically our brother. We all made the song, and we all looked at each other and we're like, "Yeah, we want to be, we want to be artists. Yeah. We want to be rappers." So thirteen was the first time I recorded ever. And then after that, it was just all just music, just making music, just making music. We went from recording off a MacBook, no microphone, just the MacBook mic, just the, the MacBook built-in. mic with yes. the headphones in. Love it. <laughs> uh, thirty day trial of uh, Pro Tools. Everybody's using their email to get the. So like, ten of us use thirty day trials. <laughs> Overall, just <laughs> to extend the, the period, yeah. Justin Bieber remixes. Oh, um, 
finding beats mm-hmm. and just mm-hmm. yeah then eventually we're like build our own studio built our own studio we were like it was it wasn't it was like in our room had the mic the computer the speakers and that was it and eventually we got ourselves a big studio in a uh, gas town and then that's when everything kind of fell apart because we all worked together at true religion so all of us were button heads there mm. so it was it was it was a build-up but yeah 13 grade two first time i ever performed 13 recorded my first song and then the rest is proceeding to happen yeah then here we are yeah exactly talking about it um one thing that came to mind right away when you mentioned dancing is and then trans transitioning to music um do you think because you had such a good grasp of rhythm from dancing that that translated into being able to rap being able to rap on beat yeah i think it had a big factor on it like of course i used to like i was in like grade five and i made a uh mcdonald's remix to a kiss kiss by chris brown and (laughs) t-pain okay and so I would I would always write stuff and I would always jot down like little maybe like two bars here and there. Yeah. But dancing for sure gave me a big advantage. Yeah. Cause I was a very visual learner and like hearing a beat, like dancing to it, it's kind of almost related to speaking as well, because each movement hits a beat. Exactly. Well that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Yeah. Um so cause you, you had that like drilled into you from mm-hmm. all the years of dancing. Yeah, from right the time i was in probably like kindergarten Mm -hmm. till grade 12 it was just dance yeah amazing yeah so it was always like i was always on point with the rhythm i was a good dancer i wasn't like crazily amazing everybody else thought but i thought i was mediocre but like yeah dancing definitely gave me a big advantage do you do you still do any of that any of the dancing um i've actually come up with a couple like choreograph like choreos for my songs that i've had but i've never really was like yeah i'm gonna go on stage and do this but i play around here and there you Mm -hmm. know with my dancing Mm -hmm. still but not as much as i used to or i think i should to be honest i think i shouldn't just x out dancing altogether you know like i mean because we have chris brown we had usher we had you know neo all these guys but Mm -hmm. you're doing that plus the rapping and there's nobody I know of yet that's, you know, maybe, maybe like, I don't know. Th- that could be a breakthrough. That could be. Th- yeah, because <laughs> there's really nobody that really does dance and sing or rap at the same time anymore. Besides really like Chris Brown. But I, I wouldn't think of him as a rapper. No, no he's I mean. more of, yeah, he's R&B for sure. Um, although like a lot of your stuff is, and that's something else I wanted to get at. Like maybe we can talk about it now is um, your style is. Uh, a lot of like melodies yeah right? um everyone's got auto tune nowadays but mm-hmm. you're actually using it to um not just as a sound but because you've got making it like it's an instrument like yeah. my voice, making my voice an instrument basically. you're singing in there yeah. and then the, the tune is catching it and and enhancing it in, yeah. in, in a way um is that is that something that was influenced by certain artists or uh not really influenced by other artists because I never really the only artist I'm really influenced by or I really look up to is Lil Wayne okay and so like that's who I wanted to be right and the way he uses autotune is like damn like you see, it, it might crack but it sounds like it's supposed to be like yeah that. it sounds like it's supposed to be there so like <laughs> I've I've a lot of people have told me that you don't need auto tune because your voice has a natural vibration to it, but then when I do hear it on auto tune, I'm like, whoa, yeah, yeah, well, that's crazy. Like, keep that right there, keep yeah. it the way it is. But influences for like the melodies and the, I really just try to find my own, try to be my own influencer, mm-hmm. try to like come up with different ways to use my voice with a melody or just do me, you know? Yeah. Because a lot of people are like, we don't know how to pinpoint your sound. Because you can come up with like a rap song. Then all of a sudden you come up with this auto-tune for the ladies. And it's like, I don't even know. <laughs> you don't sound like anybody I know. Yeah. It's like not to like 
pat myself on the back but like it's it feels good to hear like i don't sound like anybody else and that's what i'm trying to go for that's what everybody wants to hear right exactly like yeah. a lot of artists i hear out here like i'll listen to a song i'm like travis scott quavo offset mm. Mm. or lil wayne or this guy kanye and i'm just like I know these artists can do it themselves and make their own, but they're so influenced by these guys of high power that they kind of fall into the trap of sounding like them. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that is just a pure mimic of, you know, people just literally coming in and doing like a cover of a Drake song or like, it's not, it's like there's nothing original about nothing. it. It's just like you took a, a coloring book and you copied that page and you're just filling it in with color, but yeah. like, it's just... It's like, almost like a, a fabulous thing. Fabulous would take lyrics of songs and just switch the words and then make it his own song. I and used so, to be a big fan of Fabulous. I don't, yeah, Fabulous, yeah. Is like that's... I've, I, I forget where I heard it from, but it was in an interview with somebody. Somebody was like speaking on Fabulous. They're like, mm. yeah, he, he just takes songs that are already slightly good changes the lyrics but it's sort of the same um build, like building the same There's song like the, but in his the own way there, yeah, but like he's the changing the but words. he's changing it mm. in his own way and i heard that i was kind of like i was thrown off at it by i was thrown off by it at first like it's jocking you're you're you're, you're not original mm, yeah but then when you hear it, it's like damn like nobody sounds like this yeah. nobody can do that the yeah. way he does it well it's almost like how hip hop got started it's they just took samples and made it into something else. Yeah, exactly. So almost like what you're saying he was doing. Like, like I don't know. I just heard it from somebody in an interview talking about it. Like, I think it was on the Breakfast Club or something. Okay. But it's like, who knows really if it's... Like, a lot of people just put stuff out there, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Fab when, when I was first getting into hip-hop and, and stuff in high school, Fabulous was one of my favorite mm -hmm. favorite artists. Yeah, and I don't know. Like, that, that doesn't sound like... That for, to me, that sounds like something I haven't heard of before. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to go and maybe re-listen to some of those older songs and see if I can catch anything. Because um, uh, yeah, I was always so impressed by his rhyme schemes. Yeah, like, like fa oh yeah, man, fabulous. he would do like five word rhyme schemes, something like a phenomenon. And he looks so effortlessly too. The, dr the drum is on. Uh, um, Hustlers can't eat fit meals and it feels something like when it's Ramadan. Hope yeah. you chumps been walking with Amma on. Like just keeps going on and on. Dude. <laughs> um so yeah, so you're you're definitely not using autotune as a crutch. I think no. that's a big theme of what I'm trying to get at here. Um the the singing and the melodicness just really blend seamlessly with with the rapping and, and the things that you're doing um into this this new this new the style yeah um and we're gonna get to see like a whole new you know scotty 2.0 on yeah, halloween basically. with the new single yeah yeah i'm probably gonna finish um, the video on halloween as well but yeah i'm just trying to reinvent myself from what i was before yeah and a lot of people i've shown this song to have actually been like where has this been this whole time <laughs> where's like, this where, guy been? like yeah, where yeah. where where did this come from because yeah. this is probably your best song to date mm -hmm. we have so many songs that like i'll just I have like a list of songs in my phone that i just listen to here and yeah. there but i'm not so like for me it's like i need to have it perfect like it needs to be to the tip perfect like i can't just put out mediocre stuff because people are gonna be like oh he's just he's just trying to come up he's just trying to yeah and you've you've put in a, enough work now at this point to your where you're past that yeah you've come up yeah, you've put, put out in, my mediocre stuff. You've put out that stuff. Yeah, you've done the trial and error yeah. and all that. And um, yeah, so that that's that's great. Like really having something refined. I can't stress that enough though. Like so many people want to do like 40 songs. Yeah. I still think there's so much value in an artist spending like three or four sessions just getting one song really good. Yeah. Really right. And please buy the stems. Yeah. And please send it to me to mix. Yeah, see, that's the thing. That's like with me. I was like with my old boys. We were banging out songs, songs, yeah. songs, 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 right. songs, songs. We got like fifty videos up on YouTube. There you go. And so it was like, eventually, I'm like, instead of putting out ten mediocre songs in like two, three weeks, yeah, 
you could put all that effort into two, three songs sure. and have them perfected. Really polished. And yeah. release them. Mm-hmm. And they'll probably do more numbers than releasing a 25 track album. Exactly. Yeah. Stuff that looks subpar that people are going to watch 30 seconds of the video mm-hmm. and be like, okay, f- like, forget, yeah. <laughs> forget it. This yeah, sounds like they stole it off YouTube. Exactly. Instantly. Be mm-hmm. like, people are smart, man. Like, the average consumer is just listening to music constantly. They're, they're, they can't get enough. They're on exactly. SoundCloud. They're on Spotify all day long. Like, they can hear, you know, a pro mix versus like the macbook mic over yeah them. exactly <laughs> they could catch that shit instantly yeah, so right you, you want to stand out um so yeah like the the value of a single right like w- um i was talking to porter uh when he was here the other night like we did his album um the one that you were on mm-hmm. um you know with which was over 10 songs phenomenal yeah really great stuff um but then you know a couple months later um he hit he hit me up with that single and he's like okay this is the one and i'm like okay this beat this is the one you had like a fire verse on it the hook was everything about it was and i and i told him i was like dude i probably spent as much time engineering that (laughs) single as i did on your whole album because i wanted to get it right like for all of us you know what i mean like yeah when 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 something just feels that good yeah you know like you just want it you just want it do right everything to it to make it perfect exactly and everybody was on board mm-hmm. everyone came together so well for that one that one song was like a project in itself exactly um and in the end like yeah it just turned out it turned out so great and um one single man can get you royalties for the rest of your life exactly there you go exactly. that's it so believe believe in that yeah mm-hmm. believe, put, put, believe in the process believe in the process yeah and don't rush don't rush you know um to try and get to that end result like oh like i recorded my three verses and my hook blow it up the next beat exactly load up the next beat no no and i know that's i know what that's like man i've been in eight thousand sessions like that where the artists are like that and i get it i get it dude it's fun you're in the zone you know the Hennessy's kicking in. Exactly. And you're like, let's go. Let, let's keep this going. But I, I just can't stress that enough to like slow down and really try and, yeah, try and, you know, quality. Exactly. Quality over quantity, maybe. All is that same. what I'm talking about? There is, like, really. <laughs> That's why it, take, so. it took me so long to release anything. Yeah. So I'm just like, it needs to be the right time. It needs to be the right song. Yeah. And it has to have the right build up to it. Yeah. Cause like I got some, I got a couple songs on SoundCloud, but it's like it came to a point where I'm like, am I an artist? I don't have anything on Spotify. I have mm. features, yeah, but it's like I don't have anything of my own original material, and so that's why this song is such a big deal to me. Cause it's like it's like that homecoming, you know? It's like here I'm back, better than before, totally. And I'm trying yeah. to prove a statement. I'm trying to prove something. Like I'm in this for life. I'm in it forever. Yeah, yeah. No, you're you're. This is. This is your plan A, mm-hmm. clearly. It is right because like, there's, you know, I always I'm always curious about that when I have people on the show and when I meet people at the studio. Like, is this your hobby weekend thing? Like, some people play soccer in a weekend league. Some people come to the studio. Like, mm-hmm. everybody's got a thing, right? But there's there's a handful of people like where this is like this is it for them. Yeah, like they're, this is they're, really they're making it. But this is like if <laughs> if I don't have music, then I really don't like know what I'm going to do. Like right. my grandpa, my dad. So it's like my whole mentality, my whole life is, I need to do better than they did. You have a to, legacy to prove that. Yeah, like not so much I'm worthy <clears throat> of being your grandson or your son, but like to prove that I am, I can be better than you. Like, sure, because mm-hmm. my dad was better than my grandpa. Yeah did more things than my grandpa and it's my turn to go on and build that legacy for myself and prove to him like hey you didn't you didn't fuck up creating me like you created <laughs> like you know like because i didn't meet yeah. my dad for the first yeah. time until i was 19 so throughout that whole time i'm like does he even like me like mm. i might have a chat with him here and there but it was never on a like i'm your dad you're my son I kind of I like yeah, yeah, two-tone actually yeah I'm six months older than him. We have another brother who I'm um, they're about the same time gap. So it was like 
I'm the only one he claimed. Oh, okay. And so it was like, that made me even more have to be like, okay, I need to show him that, like, I don't know. It's a weird mentality to have, like, I am your son. Like, mm. mm-hmm. you know? So it's just, yeah. I need to, he toured with Celine Dion. Like, how yeah. can you outdo that, really? Yeah. Besides touring on your own. And making so a name for yourself. Exactly. So it's like, I'm just trying to live out the legacy and keep it going and build my own at the same time. Yeah. I got a lot to yeah. prove. Yeah. Well, that's all, that's all like natural human shit. Dude, yeah. Right. Like, um, and, and you're, it's, you seem to be doing everything you can, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, following all the right steps and you've got a good head on your shoulders and you, you know, you're taking this like 100%. Um, so yeah, I think that's really dope. I really admire that. Um, where are you recording right now and who who's your engineer? Uh right now it's the uh, I've just been the last time I recorded was when I recorded uh, this song which is in my room. Okay. Like oh with like, your own setup. Yeah, he just brought my brother brought his mic, brought his speakers, brought his laptop and we just I think I did like a hook and a verse on one and then I did a hook on another one and then he played this beat and I was like, yo I have something for this. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote it to a song on YouTube. That's usually what I do. I template YouTube. Right. Write out a hook, verse, mm-hmm. find an actual beat I can use and like that I have exclusive rights to or I own myself and I map it out and I change this, change that. But so far I've only that's the last time I recorded and the last time before that I was here. Oh really? two tracks with okay. the porter. So um as an engineer I'm always curious about what equipment people are using and mm-hmm. what what what's your vocal chain like and so like what kind of mic have you got what's what, what's the setup like at home i'm curious for me like i don't really that's not my expertise cause I'm, 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 i i i i want to get into knowing how to like what's the perfect mic to use to record on mm. or what's the perfect program like fruity loops i've used pro tools i've used but i've never myself really indulged myself in knowing about yeah like oh the M- <clears throat> m8 33 5000 mic you know like <laughs> like not trying to be like rude yeah. to like engineers out there or anything yeah. but like i've i've never personally was so okay. much into okay i i get it um uh, but it sounds really clean like yeah. i i was super impressed once you recorded it like who's doing the mix and he the final master your brother my brother did it himself um wow okay cuz he um he actually made the uh uh you know an artist by the name of Free I don't think so. He's a Toronto artist, okay. and he made the uh, theme song for uh, Floyd Mayweather. Okay. The Money Team Anthem. Oh, dope. And um, so I know he knows his shit, so yeah. I know he, he's, he's correct with everything. And I mm. told him, we did the song, and I'm like, is it good to go? He's like, nope. He's like, give me like two, three weeks. Okay. I got you. Uh-huh. Sent it. I'm like, we were butting heads, because I'm like, turn up the vocals, turn up the beat. Yeah. He's like, bro, it's fine. Mm. I'm like, bro, I can barely hear it in the club. And so he's finally like turned it up. I'm like, hey, there we go. We're good. <laughs> Turn the, the for the vocal mix. Yeah, the vocal mm. like just mm. I'm like I just need the mm. vocals up a bit with the beat a bit because mm. it was very quiet to mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, he just did that and boom, he's he's. I'm try. I tried for years to get actually into contact to actually work, but it never really happened until finally he's like, I'm coming over. And so like, I'm trying to bring him to the left side team. Yep to kind of collab with us and try to like make him kind of our in-house producer beat maker and engineer and whatnot so yeah i'm just trying to just trying to build with him right now like brother brother duo you know yeah yeah, yeah. amazing yeah. so yeah he just does all the engineering for me so far now that's dope well doing a good job yeah yeah really impressed um the the mixing and the mastering and uh and the video is gonna come out it's gonna be a big Big explosion, dude. Yeah, when people I hope hear so. it and see it. I hope so. Because yeah. I've waited so long for this yeah. moment. Yeah. So long. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, you know, we'll make sure that, um, you know, set me up with all the links and shit. Because yeah. I definitely, yeah, when the sure. podcast comes out, it's probably going to be the day before that. Like, mm-hmm. it'll be Friday. So, um, that'll be a big weekend for you. Yeah, it will you be. Know? It will be. Um, hopefully get all, you know, a lot of, Eyes on Vancouver on Scotty. Yeah. That's the goal. Um, that's why this is a good timing, actually, that, that you came in today and mm-hmm. we're doing this because well, this will, people are hearing this, but this will be coming out on Friday. So, yeah. Um, sick. 
Good for you. And then so once that's out, like, um, is it? Are you? Are we? Are we just talking like working on singles yeah. at that point? Singles, kind of thing. Singles, yeah, singles, 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 singles. I think there's more marketing in singles. Like a whole album, yeah, it's cool, but. I, I like myself personally. I get bored sometimes. It's like, I'll like hear a new album and I'll go through like the first couple of songs and I'll be like, sort of sounds the same to me. Like, yeah, or I, you're waiting for the good stuff. Yeah, like the, <laughs> like the baby. Like every song's a banger, but every yeah. song sounds the same. Mm. And then it's so I'm just singles, singles, singles until eventually I'm like prepared. Like I have enough songs where I can like pick like maybe like 20 good ones. Yeah. I can be like, hey. Let's make a let's make an album. Let's release this. Yeah, or even once the singles are out, you can put out a compilation. Yeah. Or like, look, this is my body of work of the last year, mm-hmm. year and a half. This is the 2020 Scotty, like yeah. in a package. But beforehand, yeah, just release all the singles. Like, um, that's basically what Get Rich or Die Trying was. It was like I think there were 11 singles on mm-hmm. that album which is fucking bananas. And then the album came out and there's like three, four other songs, yeah, but they're but also dope. Exactly. But it's like, Jesus, man. Nah, that's how you put out a yeah. solid body of work. Make every, try and make every song a hit. Every song, yeah, like every singles. song count, right? Every song count. There you go. Yeah. Um, I was a little bit shocked um, when I found out Drake's newest project was I I got what I'm trying to say is the the impression I got that it was just like I didn't have time to put out music this year. Here's unreleased <laughs> shit that I had yeah. left over from yeah, my exactly. career. And then hearing it as well, I kind of got that impression as well. Yeah. Um did you have a chance to hear the new the new Drake album and do you have any thoughts on it? Which uh the um what's it called again? I don't even remember. It's it's the one what we should look this up. Um is the one with the car in the Yeah, front? it's the one with the car. The album like, cover ask, looks a like, little like they did it in 10 minutes as well. Oh, um. yeah. No, because those are <laughs> those are songs that he couldn't release earlier before either, too. And so I've listened to most of them that are on there. It's just the old Drake. That's all it is. Yeah, it's a bunch of old stuff. Um, so, kind of disappointing because it's it, like... I was disappointed, yeah. It's like, come on, like you can do better than that. You have infinite money. <laughs> You can get anybody you want, <laughs> exactly. any producer you want, and you just decided you to just decided to. It's what it felt like to me, and I'm a I'm a massive Drake fan. I'm not trying to shit mm-hmm. on him right now. I'm just trying to for the for the sake of discussion. Yeah, um, it was a little bit of a letdown, you know. Mm-hmm. Scorpion was dope, you know. Yeah, Scorpion was views dope. was dope. More life, all those felt like refined refined projects you know and then this was just like a throwaway i was at too many raptors games this year i didn't have time to be in the studio so trying to finish building my house (laughs) here's some stuff i haven't released yet enjoy it like um, i don't know uh so i still love you drake yeah uh, it was it was weird yeah (laughs) drake's a I, i rate drake who else do you like um besides wayne like who are you listening to these days a lot of UK artists. UK artists. Yeah. Okay. There's this group called uh, D Blog Europe, uh, LB and uh, Young Ads. I've been, yeah, constant replay. And like I like Nave Smalls, a, a lot of UK artists. I'm I listen to a lot. I'm very. I, I don't want to say influenced by them, but I just like that they're so different. Do you like that rapping with the British accent thing? I actually do. Yeah. It's actually, I find it dope because it's like, for me, Young Ads is like the UK version of Young Thug. Mm, okay. And so like, you'll hear something, go look up the lyrics and find out he didn't even say what you thought. <laughs> and it's just like, holy shit, how did he do that? Yeah, yeah, Cause yeah. Because he just knows how to put like words together or like shorten words mm-hmm. or like just, it has a lot of UK artists right now I'm listening to. It's definitely a style because when you hear... British artists singing, for example, you can't tell they're British. No. But when it's done, when it's rapping, it's like they overemphasize the Britishness yeah. of it. So you know, like, hey, I'm British. Bruv. Yeah. In um, it, in it. <laughs> and it's, it's it's a unique way of, it's, it's still getting, I'm still warming up to it, I gotta yeah. be honest. But there is obviously, like, unbelievable amounts of history and, and you know, in England, yeah. for God's sakes, all the just stuff that's alone, come out of there. London those, in itself, all those you rockers know, and whatnot, and they're, you know, the the 
dubstep and the drum and bass yeah. shit's huge there. So that kind of blends into their hip hop yeah. a little bit, yeah. I feel like, when I hear it, um, which is different from our influences over here where we maybe get stuff from, I don't know, we maybe get more South America or I don't know where we would get our influences from sampling, but they're getting a lot of it from that electronic yeah. <clears throat> um, type shit, which is really cool. So, okay. Yeah, British artists. Um, anybody in Vancouver that you'd like to collaborate with or that that you like right now that you think is Boslin I'd like to do a track with him I feel like our energy on a song would be pretty good together uh, my homie Crescent we've been in talks a lot but we're always so busy um, there's really not because I've been doing features sure so I've been working with a lot of people yeah so like about now I'm just like yeah, I gotta focus on myself, mm -hmm. but like yeah, Boslin, I for Illy Miniachi. Yeah, those are a couple of guys I'd like to do a song with. I think I sound. I think we'd sound good together on a song. Yeah, because like with me, I like to go big. Like if we do a song, we have to do a video. Yeah, it, we have to perform oh, yeah. it once. Oh yeah, either you know both Boslin and Crescent are hugely talented and yeah. have a big following. So yeah, that could be a big, you know big fusion mm -hmm. you know um okay i could see that um and uh if people want to check you out obviously you've got your soundcloud um the new singles coming out are you are you going to be updating like uh, a youtube channel with with new videos is that yeah i'm gonna start up my own youtube mm. channel. i've had a lot of people say yo drop your video off my youtube channel i'd rather start at ground zero sure like put my video on my own youtube i don't care if it gets thousand views if it gets whatever as long as it's out there and people can see yeah. it and people <clears> can <throat> hear it and yeah i just i got my i got my uh i just signed up for distro kid oh good for you um yeah so I, I have i'm just waiting i just got the cover art done and so now i'm i'm just pushing to put everything on platforms now but SoundCloud will always be there. SoundCloud, I'll, I'll even put back end on SoundCloud. Yeah. Just because. Yeah. It's, yeah. Gotta have one. Yeah. It's exactly. 2020. Gotta have yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> and so like, yeah, just, I uh, have my, I have the Spotify ready to go. Apple Music. I even have TikTok ready to go. Mm, haven't dipped into that one yet, but yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm just, I'm, I'm just making sure that I have everything prepared before I. Dope. Officially send it out. Yeah. Get your, all your <clears throat> what is it ducks in line yeah get everything you know all the stars line for the mm -hmm. for the big reveal so yeah dude no i think you're 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 a really good example for a lot of up-and-coming guys because i've been doing this a long time i've, I've seen a million people yeah. done a million sessions i've seen so many different artists and um i think you really are like the complete package um I appreciate so that. thank you um hopefully people listening to this have um taken some gems away from yeah. some things we've talked about today because i think it's it's super important um and what about on social media if people want to follow you where's that uh, my instagram is it's dot scotty j uh facebook scotty jones twitter pretty sure it's it's dot scotty j as well and uh yeah it's just i'm mainly on my instagram and facebook yeah okay. those are the two main Social media is to get things out, right? So yeah, unless you're arguing about politics or abortion, yeah. you're not on Twitter. No, I don't. I don't personally go near it. Yeah, um, per, yeah, I don't really. I just actually downloaded the Twitter app like last <laughs> like week, just last week. <laughs> yeah, so I, I've like had Twitters before, and I'm just yeah. like, this isn't yeah. really yeah fit where I'm trying to go with sure with yeah. my music. It's not very uh, yeah. to me. I don't want to say it's not useful, but it's not a platform that I want to be that I want to take advantage of mm -hmm. and use. Like Instagram is probably the biggest one to... It's so great yeah, yeah. for artists. It's such a great tool. Mm -hmm. um, so great. We'll, we'll check you out. And then the new single, October 31st on Halloween, back yep. end. Um, look out for that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I'm hopefully trying to drop it three, three o'clock, six o'clock. Okay. But if anything, it'll be ready for like nine latest okay. the okay. latest so we can crank it when the kids come knocking yeah, exactly. at the front door we'll exactly. scare all the trick-or-treaters yeah yeah <laughs> throw that back end on yeah and a lot of people don't know what back end means really either 
you like as, as I've had a lot of people, what does it mean? What does it mean? I'm like, you know, the money you get when you're paid to come out to a club or paid to come to a strip club, uh. the money that they give you is your back end. So say I, I say um, just like random, like the number five wants me to come out and the money that they give me, I can either keep it or I can throw it. But that's my back end. That's the payment that they give me for sh- even showing up. I see. Yeah, I so see. a lot of people are just like, I just had to put that out there because a lot of people have been asking me like, what does back end even mean? Yeah, because well, the, the last bar is I'm not showing up unless there's a unless there's back end. Right. Okay. So I'm not coming unless you <laughs> yeah. pay me, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah, yeah. And I may throw it back at the club, or I may just put I it in my pocket. Put it in home. my pocket. Yep. For some beats on a rainy exactly. day. Exactly. Who knows? Or my next video. Yeah. Because so. <laughs> like um, that, that's yeah. a lot of touring and just being called to a club is what how, yeah. a lot of these artists make money. Oh, dude. Yeah. You know, nobody's the amount of money you make off streams is like that's, a fraction of a penny. It's that, like I think it's like seven hundred for a million views on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> I think the most you can get is off a title. I think it's about like twelve hundred or something mm-hmm. you get for a million views. Yeah, they all do. They all do slightly different numbers, mm-hmm. but it's at the end of the day, it's minuscule. Right? Oh, yeah. You've got to be like pocket change. You've got to be Travis Scott, Drake, Kanye to be making a touring l- three, four times yeah. a year, <laughs> like geez. filling out stadiums. Yeah, and yeah, so um, find other ways to make money. Yeah, like, that's my that's my <laughs> dream right there. Is just just have people screaming my name and singing line for line each of my lyrics. That's like that's why I do this. It's just for that that final euphoric feeling like yeah. they know me. Yeah. They yeah, know yeah. who I am. Yeah. And also to feed my daughter as well and make sure she has a future. But like that's like the ultimate goal is so like sold out Madison Square Garden. Everybody's screaming my name. Everybody's rapping, singing to my lyrics. Like right. that's right. that's the goal. Yeah. That would be pretty phenomenal. Yeah, okay? where you can just the, the mics at your ha- at your mouth, and then you move the mic to the crowd. I've done it once, and then never, and they, the the beat doesn't stop, and they just keep going. I did it <laughs> once, and it actually people were were singing along. Oh, wicked! Yeah, it was at a Lil Windex show actually in Surrey. I um I have this song called Amazed. It's a T Grizzly and Lil Pump remix. Okay, and the hook every. Everybody loves the hook, so I was like rapping the hook, and I I seen a couple people's mouths moving, so I stopped and I like put the mic, and they were singing yeah, line yeah. for line. I oh, was nice. like, oh, that that's, that's dope. Gotta put a smile on your that's face, a hey. dope feeling yeah. right there. Yeah, that was a good feeling. I think I have the video for it actually too. Like the somebody uh, Snapchatted it and got some people singing in the okay. background of it. So yeah, that's a dope feeling. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, many more of those to come, yeah. and in on a much bigger scale. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right, everybody. Scotty Jones, yep. Demo to Lemo podcast, dude. Thank you so much for doing this. Oh, thank you, man, for giving me this opportunity to let people know. Yeah, um, it's been a huge treat. I've learned a lot. Hopefully, everyone else has too. Yeah. Um, can't wait for the new single. We'll make sure that um, you know we share all the links. Yeah. People know where it's at. Thank you, um, thank we're you. behind you a hundred percent. Um, so yeah, thanks again. And to everybody listening, hope you're having a fantastic week and we'll talk to you soon. Peace. Alrighty.